so Eighth Wonder, I think, was Eighth Wonder was definitely your brainchild for sure. Um, I think it started um, probably before we even brought it together with just you, you know, freestyling the hallways at Clinton, the twins, um, and, and hooking up with Earl and, and all these other guys from Clinton. I think something was important to you at that point. You felt like music was really a way you wanted to go. And then you brought me and Deshaun in on it. You know, you wanted help from some guys that you knew could help you handle the business side of things. Um, you already had the music side down. You had a couple guys, a couple cats that really wanted to roll with you um, from the music standpoint. And I think Deshaun and I just felt like we could really help you bring up the, the business side of it. You know, he brought a, a group of guys together that, you know, really brought what we needed. We had Y3K, you know, Dios was like your Jadakiss, you know, that guy was gonna, you know, spit bars and he was gonna come for you. We had, you know, Dos, who was like, I think of him like Cameron, you know what I'm saying? He had that slow, sort of like real cool, chill flow. And then you had Gift, who I think, Gift was kind of a combination of them both. He could go hard, he could, you know, kind of come with the smooth rap. Um, we had Charlie Hustle, who was like, man, who can I compare Charlie Hustle to? Damn, man, he was his own guy, man. I, I really can't compare him to anybody. You had, you know, Earl Guns, you know, Earl, again, some of these guys just had their own styles. I can't really compare them to anybody that, you know, is around right now, but these guys had their own styles that they brought. And then on the business side of it, you know, Reno. man, I'm just, twins. the twins, every, just like everybody that we had, the twins had that. It was it maybe might have looked a little gimmicky, but the fact that they were identical twins that could spit, you know, go bar for bar, those guys were, those guys were dope. I still see them walking around, <laughs> around the Bronx. And we pushed, man. We pushed hard. I mean, we made, we made the CDs. The guys in the studio. Um, I think we were really pushing. You still got the tattoo, man. I got, I got it covered. Up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame you, bro. <laughs> Uh, but we were young and impulsive, man. I think, yeah. you know, I think that really showed in, you know, some of the things that we did, you know, some of the paths we took. Um, but I think all in all, there was love and there was brotherhood there. And I think that's what made it made it so strong. You know, everybody was in it for everybody. Nobody was in it just for themselves. We would have these these nights where, you know, Remy, Deshaun, Victor, myself, we would, you know, talk about what we wanted to accomplish, where we were going, and we would invite the artists over and we would sit around the table and it reminded me, so I was gonna go there and say, this reminded me of like how Nino and his boys used to meet in New Jack City around the table, you know? We'd all be sitting there discussing what we're, what was next. We talked about, you know, we talked about the business side of it. You know, we talked about the studio time. We talked about, you know, we just, we talked about the things that we wanted. You know, we used to just crack jokes on each other. Everybody was roasting one another, just laughing, having a good time. Yo, Maury Showtime, you know, things like that. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Um, <laughs> Who was Maury Showtime? That, <laughs> Maury Showtime, that's me. You know, I, I, that Showtime name stuck with me for a long time. I'm, I'm glad it caught on. Um, but, you know, we'd be sitting there and we'd just be plotting the growth of Eighth Wonder. Like, what we were going to do, how we were going to do it, the things that we were going to do. You know, I remember discussing like, yo, we were looking at those hypnotized videos and going, yo, we could do it bigger than Diddy. You know, we could do this, we could do that. We're gonna have this, we're gonna have that. Um, and then we would always end those meetings after talking and discussing, you know, business first. Everybody had a voice, the artist had a voice, we all had a voice, we all talked. We all, you know, we respectfully agreed, respectfully disagreed. And then we end the night with a little, you know what I'm saying, a little battle session, freestyle, the guys would start rapping, you know, beats on the table, you know. <laughs> you know, all that, and then we start beating, you know, so I start rapping. And man, I just remember those times and the energy in that room was just so powerful. You know, I think that, man, yeah. if I think if we could have bottled that energy and sold it, we might have even have done that. <laughs> And that would have popped off, you know, because it was infectious, you know, and just the back and forth, guys battling back and forth, you know, bar for bar, you know, no one's slipping up, no one's just like, no one's, everybody's coming off the top of their head, you know, it was just such a, such a dope experience that I had. Like I said, it seems like it was those nights that built that fire and 
you know, I think sometimes I still hear the those bars we were in the, you know, people were spitting back to back. You know, I tried to do a little something, but that's just not <laughs> rapping. It's just not for me, you know. <laughs> that more Showtime was just a dance guy. I'm not gonna be nobody's <laughs> rapper, but you know, Remy was really he led by example. You know, being able to do both, I think is what is why it worked so well. Because if you couldn't have done both, you would not have understood what the guys that were rapping were going through and what we needed to do from the business end either. And I think that we all captured that together. But I think Remy's thoughts about it, his diversity and being able to do that is what really, is why we followed him into Eighth Wonder. And we felt good about it. You know, it wasn't like he was pretending. Like he was actually living half of one side on one part of his life and living it on the other part of his life. So it was like a perfect combination of that and that allowed that natural leadership like, all right, here's my vision. I need you guys to help me get there. So I think you gave us, Remy gave us the blueprint and we just kind of followed. Um, not blindly, because we were able to, like I said, respectfully disagree or you know, give our own ideas about where we should go, but um, that's what gave us the strength that we needed. And it started from the top, you know, down.